the brilliant Eric Weinstein once said, most men live their whole lives without ever hearing their voice. What do you think Eric meant by that? Never having heard, not finding, but heard your own voice. So you never put it out there. Most men live their whole lives being something they're not. Eric was on, I listened to a podcast he was on, and he uh, said that he did little videos where he played the guitar, and he's not very good at it. Like me with the drums, you know, I, uh, if you look back at my videos, I kind of had a couple clips of me playing the drums really badly. And it was kind of an experiment just to see what kind of comments we'd get. And it, it, there's one thing that I could correlate. Uh, people that were super experienced, like top-end, high-end musicians would be encouraging. And they would say, keep going. Like, maybe offer a few tips. Like, this is how you can get better. If the, you know, this is what you need to do. But keep at it, man. It's really good. While the people that are at or below our levels would just say the most vile things, you know, like, you should kill yourself, you suck. <laughs> Finding your own voice, really being okay with who you are and putting it out to the world. Um, if you notice, like, one of the themes of my channel is me being really bad at new things. I like to try new things out and, and suck at them. And it's not just to be relatable, but it's just, like, I don't know. I don't know why I do it. I just, uh, I just want to share the process, if you will. But that's like, it's scary. It's there's a there's a fear. We want to stick to the things we're good at. We there's there's want to master something and be recognized as mastering that thing. You know, want to be the best at something and have somebody say, "Wow, you're really good." But there's also something to. You know, just putting yourself out there naked for the world to see and just, you know, shit all over and you, to try something new, to be bad at something and to be vulnerable. Uh, I think that's part of it, finding your voice. You know, I, when I was growing up, I did a lot of, I was, a, I'm a really good illustrator, like really good, like I could be professional, but I was never encouraged and it was always said that that was frivolous and that you can't make a living doing art and uh, I never had anybody encourage me. So I stopped doing it and I got away from it and I always wondered like what would have happened if I would have just followed that passion? You know, we, we let life get in the way and we let our passion die and we just give up on our dreams and, and we take the path that's in front of us because it's not necessarily because it's easy but it's there, it's available like, you know, for work career you know I've always followed the money I've always done the thing that's in front of me that's easy to do not necessarily to, not, it's not saying the work is easy you know there's nothing easy about construction work but it was there like it's something I could do without have much expense to you know like I didn't have to go to school for hours after work to learn a, you know what some people have to do to master something you know like they have to not only do that thing but then they have to learn on the side and all their time and is dedicated to that one thing where in my case it was like hey there's work available I'm gonna go do that and they're gonna pay me money and it's easy I mean I could I've gone pretty far in this line of work and I've made it up into management and now I'm running giant construction sites and I got you know hundreds of men under me but you know is it, it was the easy path let's be honest you know I took it because it was there and then once I got into this line of work, I, I really put my nose to the grinder and I worked my ass off to get to where I am. But we can't honestly say, did I really take any risks getting into construction? You know, when my pursuit was I wanted to be a chemical engineer and I was going to school for that and that would have required me going to school after work, you know, working 12 hour shifts and then doing forest work and uh, somewhere along the line, you know, my daughter was born and it just was like, eh, you know, I'll just do this instead. I settled, really, honestly, I settled. And you could say that maybe I was successful in settling powerlifting. You know, why am I doing what I'm doing with powerlifting? I'm taking it as far as I can take it, and it's, it's an obsession. And it's just because I want to see it. It's like, I want to see how good I can be. And uh, I'm willing to risk you know, maybe shaving a few years off my life or whatever, just to see if I how far I can push it. I'm what's known as a late bloomer. You know, 
I did let my dreams die, and I let things, my pursuits kind of get pushed to the back. And when I discovered powerlifting, I was already 40. You know, I started training heavy at like 38, 39. But it was really 40 years old is when I started competing. And it was about 41 or 42 where I realized I could be good at this. And it was only maybe at the age of 46 or 47, right about that. You know, when did I meet Bobby? Was that 48 yet? No, I was 46. That's when I thought, man, maybe I could be great. And now it's just become this relentless pursuit. Have you guys ever noticed that I'm always trying to encourage you guys to, to compete, even if it's just a local meet? Just just do it. Just enter a meet. The, the number one thing I hear is, well, I'd like to compete, but I want to wait till my numbers are good. And I'm all, what do I always say? Do it. Just do it. Who cares? Who cares if you, if you can bench 135 pounds and you know you're going to be last place? Well, all right. I mean, that's a little hyperbolic. Maybe we could get you up to two plates or whatever. But um, the point I'm trying to make is it's never good. There's always, life has always got some condition in your path that will prevent uh, you from having a perfect scenario to follow the, that thing on your bucket list. Where I'm more of the mind of, if it's there, if I can do it, I'm going to do it. I've wasted so many years of my life to drugs and alcohol and... I lost an entire decade that I'll never get back, and now that I'm blooming and blossoming, showing the world what I'm made of, I'm already going to be almost 50. Jeez. So it's like I'm the, the, the star that shines brightest, burns out the quickest. You know, even if I was 100% natural, how long can I do this for at this level, like pushing as hard as I am? It's like, man, I'm just coming into my own and I already have to think about quitting. What a bummer. But it also occurred to me that there's a million things that I could do, and I don't need to be defined by one single thing. Boxing is a good example. I bought that heavy bag, and I lied to you guys. I said it was for cardio, but it was because I wanted to learn how to box. Right, let's be real. And the reason I said it's for cardio is because we all know I'm fucking horrible at it. <laughs> oh, do I get out of this place? Oh, here we go. So that's just my way of saying, well, it's just, yeah, I'm just doing cardio. You know? I'm not really serious about this. No, I am serious about it. I just suck at it. But I'm getting better. <laughs> Look at this scar on my face. Jesus. And then, you know, I did buy that drum set because I used to play the drums. And I want to become good at it. And there's a bunch of things like uh, painting Warhammer figurines. I'm really trying to master that. Artwork, I'm trying to get back into that. Tattoo art, uh, I'm actually good enough now where I could probably professionally be a tattoo artist. Uh, there's just so many things I can do, and I'm going to try all of them, and I, uh, I want to encourage people that are afraid to put it out there to get, try it. Try everything you possibly can. You know... We all have to support ourselves. We have to go to work. We have families. And there's, unfortunately, if you're doing your job as a provider, as a man, you can't come first. You just can't. Other people have to come before you. But that doesn't mean you have to give up on your dreams. Because one thing I've learned is with my wife, we have a true partnership. And we try to take care of each other. She's trying to go to school to become uh, a biologist, and she's almost there. She's almost got everything she needs to do that, and I kind of dropped the ball for a little while there because I was chasing my pursuits as a high-level power lifter, and the whole time she was in my corner, and she was, she was there for me, and she made sure that I got everything I needed to succeed. How the fuck do I get out of this garage? Oh, here we go. And now I have to do that for her. I got, you know, she needs help getting back into school and she's got one more semester before she gets her degree. And then from there, she could either move on to a high level career or she could pursue like her master's or her PhD even. You know, so we're really big on making sure that we can meet each other's needs and, and not let our, our, our dreams and our goals just go by the wayside. The unfortunate truth is it's a real grind when you have 
a family that you're supporting and day in and day out you get up you go to work you come home you train you go to bed you get up you go to work you come home you train you go to bed rinse and repeat and one of the things that tends to happen is we get into these routines and we settle and i'm here to tell you you can't you can't lose that passion that childlike wonder you, you got to be able to find your voice now finding your voice putting yourself out there it's going to come with a lot of criticism Nobody at your level or below your level is going to want to see you succeed. I don't know why there's a crabs in the bucket thing, but it's there. The other thing is, it's really easy to get your voice hijacked. We all have our things. It's, it's either Natty or not, or Christian versus Muslim, or Republican versus Democrat. We become ideologically possessed and, uh, you know, that can become your voice. Your group identity can become more important than your individual voice. And you can, you can become singularly focused. When that happens, that's called ideological possession. And when that happens, you are no longer you. You have lost your ability to think critically and you just can no longer speak for yourself. You speak for the ideology. And I see that more and more every day in some people never have their voice to begin with because they're born into the ideology. I mean, you see these podcasts where the kids grow up in an LGBT home and now they're trans or, uh, you know, like, uh, I don't want to bring up specific examples, but I know some people I'm close to who are super liberal and what do you know? Their kids are activists. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's, did they ever, did they ever find their own voice did they ever get a chance to find their own voice or was that something they were pushed into the bottom line is it's important to self-reflect and it's important to make sure that what you're doing is your true self and you're not speaking on behalf of something bigger than yourself that you have now taken on as your identity see the thing is it's the reason why it's dangerous to identify by the group me for the longest time, I identified as Charles the Marine. And when I got injured and I could no longer be a Marine, I lost myself. And I used to, I don't want to identify myself as Charles the Power Lifter because what happens if I get injured or I can no longer compete? Then what am I left with? You know, you don't ever want to identify yourself by things that you do. It's like, yeah, these are things I do and they're things I'm proud of, but they don't make me as a person. You gotta, I think that this is like the, the number one thing that most people are missing in their lives is their ability to be their genuine, true selves. And it's a lifelong endeavor because the bottom line is that, you know, even though we can act like we don't care what anybody thinks about us and that we're all together and like nobody gives, you know, it, it's a lie. Everybody, we're gregarious by nature. Of course we care about the opinions of others. If we didn't care about the opinions of others, we would never correct our behaviors. Uh, that's the whole point of a community, is we kind of police ourselves. Like, things are enforced through the group's opinions and the opinions of others. And that's the reason why most of us aren't running around in loincloths with, like, you know, hand paint on our faces like Lord of the Flies, because we know what socially acceptable is, and we try to stay in the line, so... But that doesn't mean you... That doesn't mean you you have to give up your voice. All that means is that you know you're a good societal player. You're a good boy. You you, you follow the rules and you try to contribute to the society and you try to make it better. It doesn't mean you have to give up on who you are as a person. The flip side of that is like the ideologies that some of these people belong to, where they can only speak what the group approves of, and that is just the death, the absolute death of your soul. So, you know, you got to be careful. You don't want to go too far in either direction. And when finding your voice, you don't have to go all or nothing. You can start with little things. You just put it out there. Like, maybe it is a guitar lesson that you've been putting off for a long time, and you just want to try it. But throw it online. See what people think. And you probably will get made fun of for it, because you're not going to be good at it. <laughs> but you'll get better. And then you can get to share that process with the rest of the world. And that's, that's, that's truly who you are. You know, show the world who you are. That's what it's all about. 
I don't know, man. All I know is that I'm trying to be a little bit better today than I was yesterday, and we're all learning. I don't get a lot of feedback on these videos. Uh, a couple of you have said that you really like them, but um, if you guys have any thoughts, like, lay them on me, man. I always hope to uh, start discussions, maybe get someone to think about things, but I also like to hear your opinions, good or bad. So, thank you.